Welcome back to Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group, where we explore the intersection of metabolic health and mental health, and metabolic therapies as potential treatment for mental illness. Today, we're going to do a rapid fire QA session with Dr. Guido Frank. And Dr. Frank is a board certified adult, pediatric, and adolescent psychiatrist at the University of California at San Diego. He's got training in psychotherapy, he's a clinician and a researcher. And we're going to do a couple rapid fire questions with him about the potential for nutritional ketosis as a treatment for anorexia. Now, before we get into the rapid fire, remember none of this is medical advice. Please do not make any changes to your medications, your healthcare, your nutrition without discussing it with your healthcare provider first. But let's get into the rapid fire questions here with Dr. Guido Frank. So Dr. Frank, why might nutritional ketosis work as a therapy for eating disorders and anorexia? Anorexia nervosa hallmark is a severe food restriction and weight loss. And when you think about it, it goes against nature. It doesn't use nature's usual model where we want to feed our body to be in a certain homeostasis. So it's a, it's a dramatic change. And what happens during weight loss, people get into a ketotic state, they use up all their sugar resources, and then they uh, break down their body fats into ketone bodies, and then the brain uses those ketone bodies. Now, the question then is, why would somebody who loses a lot of weight wants to lose more and more weight? It seems to be a bottomless process where individuals who already lost dramatically weight get preoccupied with shape and weight, get very scared of gaining and lose more and more. So the idea is, uh, is there maybe a self-reinforcing process in this cycle and are maybe these ketone bodies, are they reinforcing a process that people want, quote unquote, more of it? And uh, that is a hypothesis uh, that, that we have been following. And uh, the question is then whether using a therapeutic ketogenic diet that is not for weight loss, but just giving people ketone bodies for energy usage then will take away the need of restriction. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Using ketosis as an intervention to change your brain chemistry, to change your fuel usage rather than as a diet. But when it comes to studying something like a drug, it won't be available until it is proven safe and effective, you know, and approved by the FDA. When it comes to just changing how you eat, Anybody can do that. They don't need to wait for the studies to come out. And people who are looking for help now may want to say, I'm going to try this, see if it works for me. Now, as a clinician, as a researcher, uh, how, does that give you pause? And how do you respond to that? Yeah, I think it's like with any medication that you just mentioned, we still have to be certain that it works and that there's a very high likelihood that it is as much as it's safe as much is it effective. And I do not think we can be at that point yet. So I would like to discourage people from uh, trying out a ketogenic diet in, in their, under their own purview. I think uh, the, the risks, the potential risks are still high there uh, because you might not do it exactly the way as it's intended in the medical medicinal therapeutic way where you have in fact enough calories to sustain your body and you might be at a point where you get into ketosis but you're not needing you're not needing meeting your energy needs and you're not getting enough energy into and then you might worsen the condition so as much as with medication you want to do this under the supervision of a healthcare provider, right? And I, I really think these ketogenic interventions, they might be uh, at a similar level as a medical or typical, let's say, um, uh, medicine uh, type of intervention. And those interventions also need to be supervised by a physician, by a healthcare provider. So uh, so I, I really would like to urge everyone to, to participate in trials uh, but not do this on your own and see what the the research data will show. 
Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Do it under a very focused and guided way with, with experienced uh, clinicians. Now, one question we do get is what about refeeding syndrome? How does that factor into um, trying a trying nutritional ketosis for anorexia? And, and I think maybe some people don't completely understand refeeding syndrome. So briefly tell us about refeeding syndrome and if you think that has a specific concern with nutritional ketosis. Yeah, refeeding syndrome is a change in uh, brain chemicals in the process of refeeding. So when people come to the hospital, they get nutritionally um, normalized, they get a lot of food, and in that context, uh, for instance, phosphorus or other chemicals in the brain, uh, they change dramatically, which can cause significant uh changes in how you think, how you can act, uh, can be life-threatening. Uh, how it exactly would interplay with uh, ketosis and ketogenic diet, I think that remains to be seen. I'm not sure we have a very good understanding whether that would be detrimental or not. Our current study tries to address that by looking for individuals who are weight normalized at this point, where the overall uh, weight trajectory has been at a, at a good place while those individuals are still highly preoccupied with shape and weight. We know these thoughts and feelings are highly predictive of relapse. Uh, relapse rate is typically the highest uh, within 12 months after high level of care. And we really would like to uh, prevent relapse. We really would like to normalize those folks' brain chemistry so they uh, will uh, continue to be stable weight-wise, and we have a specific treatment for those those uh, thoughts and feelings around shape and we, uh, eating that would drive people to go back to food restriction. Now, are, are you optimistic that the, the research and clinical experience will eventually show nutritional ketosis as a safe and effective therapy for anorexia? I think... Uh, there is very good reason to be optimistic. Personally, I really am. I've been putting a lot of effort into this, have studied or have been reading and studying this uh, quite a bit. And I think that why I'm so optimistic is, is aside from this small pilot trial, uh, there is good basic science information research that suggests that the energy homeostasis in the brain is not at its best when you are stressed, when there's a lot of anxiety uh, happening, and um, we know that stress is a great driver of mental illness. Uh, stress can be a, an important driver of also uh, eating disorder-related behaviors, and I think there's a lot of good reason to believe that a ketogenic intervention, that an intervention that specifically targets energy metabolism, homeostasis in the brain, uh, could have a really significant impact. Whether that works for everyone, probably not because not everybody responds similarly, but I think in, in general, I'm very hopeful that uh, for the majority of people, this will be a helpful intervention. Wonderful. Thank you for your time and thank you for joining us at Metabolic Mind. My pleasure.